Congratulations, you're getting paid. I'm so excited for you. But before the company will send you the money, you need to send them a form W-A-B-E-N. And I'm gonna explain in this video exactly how to complete the form. So let's go right to it. I wanna go over first who's required to file and complete this form, right? So if you are not an individual, that is if you're a foreign corporation, a non-US corporation or some other kind of company or entity or something, that is receiving the payment, then you should not complete this form. You should complete W-A-B-E-N-E. -E. And I have a button above that'll take you to the W-A-B-E-N-E -E video, which is for entities. So if this is, if we're talking about a US, a foreign corporation that owns a US LLC that's receiving the payment, you should technically be completing the form W-A-B-E-N-E. -E. This form is going to be for my man, Fred Smith, who's down here getting paid or a single member LLC that Mr. Fred Smith owns. So if Fred has an LLC in the US and he's getting paid to that LLC, he would be completing this form. So this form is not sent to the IRS. This form is withheld and kept by the person who's paying you to certify your tax status. I The biggest point of advice that I, I like to tell my clients is that confirm that whoever's paying you is not intending to withhold taxes on the payment because if they are withholding taxes, maybe there's a way we can reduce it by making a treaty position. So I wanna talk more about that after we get through the form, but I wanna get through the form really quick. So when we're filling it out, we go to line one, identification of the beneficial owner. That's the person who is like the real taxpayer. If you're using an LLC, it's not the owner. This is always gonna be the individual who's the owner. So this is going to be in our example, Fred Smith. Fred Smith is a Canadian gentleman who actually lives in France. So we put the country of citizenship. If you have multiple, just pick one. If you, uh, and this is gonna be your permanent residence address. Again, this isn't sent anywhere. It's, it's held by the company paying you. So put the address you want. Mailing address, generally you want one that works and can receive mail. If it's different, you have to list it. If it's not different, if it's the same as this, you can leave this blank. Then we get down to the U.S. taxpayer identification number. Most people completing this form aren't going to have a U.S. TIN. You're not going to have a social or an ITIN because you're a non-U.S. person. Why would you have these numbers unless you apply for it? If you have an ITIN, you can share that. But if you don't, then you can leave it blank or put N slash A. You are supposed to include your foreign tax ID. Some people don't some countries don't have foreign tax IDs. You can put a passport number. You can put any kind of number that you think would kind of apply. If there's not a tax ID legally required, you can check the box. But I've seen companies give people a hard time for not having a foreign tax ID in here. And but so so consider that. The reference number generally is going to be blank. You won't have a reference number. You don't have to worry about that. The date of birth on here. Obviously, you know your own date of birth. Mr. Fred was born January 1st of 1977. And now the fun part, the claim of treaty benefits. I go into this more on, on this video than the W-A-B-E-N-E -E video because this is going to apply generally more to individuals. If you are investing in the U.S. stock market using a brokerage account in your own name or maybe in the LLC's name, they're going to withhold taxes on dividends. But if you live in France, you can use the tax treaty to claim an exemption on that. So what I would like to do is you Google search US tax treaties, you can find France in here, you can go to the actual treaty. And then when you're looking at the treaty, unfortunately, they're all different and they're kind of scattered on the IRS website. But once you find the treaty that applies, you click on the type of money that they're paying you, dividends. And then you gotta read this, it's really annoying, but basically it's 15% withholding on other cases. If comment below if you've used the tax treaty and completed this before, or if, if if you're having taxes withheld, I'd love to I'd love to make go into more detail about this. So what we did here is we put France, and then we put the Article 10, Paragraph 2, which is listed in the treaty, and then we put a 15% rate of withholding on dividend income. And now the company that's paying us is not going to withhold 30% on the dividends; they're only going to withhold 15%. Yay! If there are other payments, the most common ones I see are royalties. I was on the call with a client today in Peru, and he gets he gets royalties from he gets paid from YouTube and from Amazon. He gets paid royalties from podcasts. It's it's technically royalty income, but basically they'll withhold taxes based on your U.S. portion of viewership, so the ad revenue generated from your U.S. viewers. There are many different ways 
to avoid this and not pay taxes on this. And I'm definitely going to go over that in my next video. If you are from a treaty country, you might you, you should definitely at least use this to start and cite the treaty and reference the article that applies. Obviously, you might need to schedule a call with me and my team to do that. Happy to help you with it. But if you're a DIY guy and you love this video, just check out the treaties on the IRS website, find the articles that apply and submit it. You're, you're the one putting the rate of withholding. The people that are reviewing this are not tax experts. These are just HR people from companies that are paying you. <laughs> okay. So after you fill out this, which again, is just basic info and then maybe a, a treaty position, you just sign it. And you're basically certifying that you have, this is a big one. This form relates to income not effectively connected with a U.S. trader business. So if that if, if this is not connected with the U.S. trader business, you're signing the right form. If you have questions, check out the instructions and you can go through there or comment below. And, and again, I want to reiterate before you guys leave that if you're a foreign person and I say foreign, I'm in the U.S. So if you're a non-U.S. person, you shouldn't probably be paying U.S. taxes if you're doing all digital work. If you're not flying to the U.S., you're not serving clients in person, you probably shouldn't be paying U.S. income taxes. And just today, I got a $20,000 check in the mail. It was like $18,900 from, from the state of Indiana, from a client who was paying taxes based on poor advice from an old CPA. We changed the forms and actually got the check and the money back. It was surprising how quickly we got the money back. And you know, clients ecstatic. So if you've paid taxes in the past, definitely schedule a call. And if you want to learn more about this, click the next video over here, click this video, and I'm going to explain exactly why you shouldn't be paying taxes in the US. And if you have been, how to get the money back? Okay, click it. Let's do it.